family, it's so good to be back with you. Praise God for you continuing to join us as we take our walk through Matthew 26 through 28, preparing our hearts to celebrate the work of our Savior during this season. I pray that uh, you're getting your week started off well, and I praise God for you uh, joining us. This day, I want to uh, turn your attention, kind of back up a little bit to Matthew 27 I'm going to look at verses 3 and uh, through 5 uh, today. And so if you'd follow along with me, I'm looking at uh, Matthew 27, verses 3 through 5. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It reads as such. Then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and the elders saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. Uh, we dealt with this a little bit yesterday, sermonically, but um, I think the weight of this uh, text, it, it it is sobering and it presses upon you. Uh, it, it is one of those things that, that as you look at it, uh, I think I mentioned that it's not necessarily laughable. It, it's, it's actually kind of painful to watch Judas go through what he goes through. He finds himself in a situation now where uh, he sees that Jesus has been captured. I'm not sure exactly what uh, Judas thought would take place in the moment. But obviously, he sees that that uh, Jesus is is condemned. He's he's found guilty. The result of his trial is that they're going to put him to death. And quite possibly, Judas didn't think that it would go this far. And so, uh, after seeing that, the weight of of what he's done sort of begins to rest upon him. It is at this point that he goes back to uh, the high priest Caiaphas, and he he goes to him and he seeks to try to make amends, to try to fix the, this situation, to give back the money that he receives. But Caiaphas turns him away. I think I was trying to get a refund from, from a company I bought something from and I made the purchase and I'm waiting for the refund to take place. And it seemed like it was taking a little longer than it should have. And I remember, calling the company back up and saying, hey, um, something's going on. I haven't received this refund. And, and I remember them kind of responding to me saying, hey, that's between you and your bank. That's not our problem. That's your problem. We sent it. Um, it's no longer our issue. That That's, that's on you. Essentially, that's what Judas hears from uh, Caiaphas. Hey, this is no longer my problem. We gave you the money. You need to figure this out on your own. It's interesting because this should jump off the page to each of us as sort of a, a warning as, as when it comes to, to sin. I remember growing up in church, oftentimes uh, people would often say, sin will take you further than you want to go and keep you longer than you want to stay. It's interesting because... Uh, Number one, sin sin does that when we kind of embrace the instant gratification that it gives. Uh, it takes us far, but it leaves us with holding the bag. Uh, it leaves us having to deal with the repercussions and the, the guilt and the pain that comes with it. It should cause us to think twice in, in when we end up making those valuations where we pick stuff over our relationship with Jesus, pick other things over living to his glory. It, the instant gratification that comes with sin, it, it, it's only for a moment. It, it is fleeting, but we have to deal with the, the guilt and sometimes the pain of that for much longer. Sometimes the consequences of our sin can, can last us a lifetime. On the other end, what, what, is, what is tough here is that Judas finds himself in a moment of despair. So much so that he goes to this place where he commits suicide and he hangs himself. And that's equally as painful. 
Because being a follower of, of, of Jesus and, and the reality is, is that um, we don't necessarily have to be consumed by the consequences that come with our sin. We, we don't necessarily have to live in despair because we do serve a God of grace, a God who is merciful, a God who is willing to forgive. The Word of God tells us if we confess our sins, He's faithful and, and just to, to forgive us and to restore us. And that's the blessing that we can call upon, that, that God has new mercy for us, God has more grace for us, so that we don't have to be consumed and live in uh, our guilt. Family, I hope you're blessed. I hope you have a wonderful week as you get started off. I hope you're encouraged by this. And certainly I look forward to sharing with you.